how to create a random colourful circle design. I'm using CC220, but you could use 219, etc. I want to create colourful random circles. You can see the design there. Create a completely fresh document. I'm going to create a brush and it's going to be 1600 by 1600. I'm going to define that. It's the same size as the document, but it could be any size, 2000 by 2000, etc. I want to store that brush design, so go to Edit Menu and Define Brush Preset. Give it a name and click OK. The brush size is exactly the same as the size of the document that I'm going to be using. That's been stored away in the brush presets. A key panel for this tutorial is the Actions. You can find that via the Window menu. So Window menu and Actions. It's going to be a very simple action. It's going to be a transformation of the selection, current selection, and also a brush stroke applied. You've got your design there. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly clear that now. Edit and fill and wipe. Or you could just create a new document. Now with the actions. What I want to do is create, in this case, a circular selection. So using the marquee tool, just drag that across. And hold down the shift to make a circle. You could, of course, make an ellipse, or you could make any other selection shape as well. Maybe a, use a square instead, a rectangle. Window menu and brush settings. That would be useful. Got brush settings there. And I want to change that. Go to the Color Dynamics category and set all the values to the max as well as set the per tip option. You don't have to do that. You can always set the value, say, for saturation to be reduced. It's up to you. But if you want a really random, colorful design, set them all to the max. In the Actions panel, go to the bottom and click the little plus down at the bottom. That's creating a new action. So that will be recorded and it will include the selection as well as the brush stroke. Select menu and transform selection. That is stored in the action. Go to the top of the application and set the height and width to maybe 97%, 97%, or maybe 90%, whatever you want. I'm setting it to a high value of 97% because I want the rings to be very, very close. Press return. Set the brush over the entire document and apply. Because you've defined the color dynamics for the brush, the color will be randomized, so you get a nice random color applied. Each time you apply the action, the color will be randomized, so you'll get a different color for each of the circles. That's it for the action. Go to the bottom of the actions panel and click stop. It's been recorded, so play it. Go down to the bottom of the panel and click play repeatedly. Apply it 10, 15, 20 times, 100 times, up to you. Each time you click the play, the selection will be reduced and the brush will be applied with a random colour. A great way of producing random colour circles or any other selection. I would imagine at some point the selection will fail because of course it won't be able to transform it all the way down right to the dead centre. It's just going to be 97%, 97%, but it will never totally reach the centre and it will just get to a certain point and probably stop. I haven't tried it. Once you've finished, what you can do, you can go and define it as a pattern or define it as a brush, maybe apply brush strokes, 
apply effects and much, much more. I've used a circle. You don't have to use a circle as a selection. You could use an ellipse and many other selections. Create it on a layer. Go to the layer menu and new layer. Layers are much, much more flexible. You can always delete them, turn them into smart objects and much, much more. Again, with the selection tool, create a new selection. It doesn't have to be circular, maybe an ellipse this time. The same action will work with the ellipse. So you can run the transform as well as the brush again and again to create an interesting colourful design. Click play at the bottom of the actions panel repeatedly. As many times as you like. Of course, you could always create a new action. Very simply, record it with 94% or 90%. Up to you. You don't have to keep it 90-90. You could keep it 90-80. It's up to you. As the design has been applied to a layer, it's more flexible. So you can turn it into a smart object, transform it in numerous ways, duplicate it, and much, much more. To duplicate it, hold down the Alt or Option key and drag. That will create multiple copies of that layered design. You can then fill the entire screen with that colourful design. Each of the layers can be recolored using the image menu and adjustments. I'm going back to the original circle now because I want to show you some other ways of using that circle, especially as I'm going to use it on a layer. Layer menu and new layer, and then go to the tools and go for the elliptical marquee tool and create a circle. Hold down the shift to create a circular selection. Go to the Actions panel and then go to the bottom and click Play repeatedly. And you, you don't have to go all the way. You can, go, you can stop it at some point. Just stop at that point. Up to you. You don't have to use the brush settings as I've created. You can go and set saturation, maybe a low setting, and then apply it that way or maybe change the hue settings. Up to you. Just go to the brush settings panel via the window menu. You don't have to keep the layer as a normal layer. You can convert it to a smart object. Go to the layer menu and smart objects and convert. Once it's a smart object, you can apply smart filters, adjustments, and many, many more and you can always change them at any point. You can also apply transformations. You can go to the Edit menu and Transform and Distort or Warp or Perspective or Scale, up to you. Using the Distort, you can distort the design in all kinds of ways to create some very abstract looking circular designs. You can also turn it into a 3D design by going to the 3D menu. You can also warp the design. There's a whole range of different warps available, but you can also just create your own warp. Go to Edit Menu and Transform and Warp. I'm going to squeeze the smart object. I'm going to do a very limited warp and find out a lot more about warp via the Graphic Extras channel. As before, you can duplicate the design. Hold down the Alt or Option key and drag to create multiple copies of that new warped design. If you wish, you can always go back to the Edit menu and Transform and Warp and warp them slightly differently. Up to you. If you wanted to use it as a fill, what you can do, you can remove the background and define it as a pattern via the Edit menu and then use the Edit and Fill command with scripts to create all kinds of super colourful designs such as random fill, symmetry fill and many others. You can flatten the entire image, just go to the layer menu or maybe go to layer menu and smart objects and convert the whole lot into a single 
smart object. You can apply filters. Go over to the filter menu and then go to maybe stylize and oil paint. Of course, there's many other filters as well as oil paint. Set the values for the oil paint to the max. Click OK. I would suggest apply it more than once. Oil paint doesn't really work that well only applied once. You can also then recolor it. Go to the image menu and adjustments. Go for hue and saturation or color lookup and many others. You can also distort the design, maybe use liquify or maybe use the edit menu and warp. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extras channel. Always adding many tutorials about Photoshop, Illustrator, Affinity Photo and many, many others. Please add a comment or two. Always appreciated. Also, a dislike or like. Thank you much.